Okay, here's my review for the music notation program for the iPad called Staff Pad. Um, a disc, full disclaimer, full disclosure, I didn't read the manual, I didn't look at the help, uh, I didn't read or watch any online tutorials, I just downloaded the program and dove right in. Uh, I cracked open the B-flat copy of the Charlie Parker Omnibook, and I started at line number four, just to jump in the middle and to see how far I could get with this program and I thought I'd run a timer. It turns out I worked for about 10 minutes and 14 seconds until I got frustrated, and I want to show you some of the stuff that went down. So if you follow, want to follow along, I have the chart in the upper right-hand corner, and it's starting at the top there, line number four. The first problem I encountered was if I try to enter my notes with the accidentals included, StaffPad often, in fact, most of the time, interpreted those accidentals as actual notes. So you can see that first note G that I penciled in by hand, it's going to throw in a B on top of that. And I'm guessing it's because I put the B flat in there. And so what I ended up having to do is only enter the notes in with no accidentals for this measure. And then once I got everything in and erased that extra note, I could go back and add the tie and then add the B flat accidental there. So what did I learn? Don't put any accidentals in the first time you're entering the notes. Get the notes in and the rhythms first, and then go back and add the accidentals. It's a little frustrating. Next measure. Uh, trying to start off with the eighth note rest. Okay, how do you draw an eighth note rest? I don't know. I tried the number seven. Seemed to work pretty well. And here I am entering my eighth notes. So I guess I didn't learn my lesson on this next measure. I tried to just enter the measure as written. Uh, those three eighth notes followed by a B and then a G sharp, which I foolishly entered in uh, my first time around. I shouldn't have done that. And, and then at the end, I tried to do the quarter note rest as an S, because uh, that seemed to be working sometimes. And as you can see, the two extra dots on the next measure, I clicked out of the measure, and staff pad didn't like that at all. It couldn't interpret anything here. So I went backwards, and I started erasing bit by bit, and it did this for some reason. I don't know why. I'm trying to figure out what did it recognize, and I don't know. So this is when I discovered a pretty successful approach where I just put in a note or two at a time until it figures out what I'm doing. Oh, wait. But first... <laughs> I put in these three eighth notes in a row, and it just wants to make them quarter or eighth note triplets. I don't know why it's doing that. No matter what I did, if I beam those three notes together, it's just going to make them a triplet. But if you look in the music over there, line four, measure two, they're just beamed that way. It's three eighth notes beamed in a row. So after trial and error, I figured out if I beam it differently so it doesn't match the book, and then I click out of the measure... It, start to re it starts to recognize what I'm trying to do. So you can see here, I beamed it one note by itself and then two notes. It didn't like that either, so I went back. I think it didn't like how it beamed my eighth note on that low E. I, I, I just don't know. I, you know, I feel kind of dumb. I bet there's some tutorial videos that show you the exact way you need to be entering notes. So here I am. I'm trying to get rid of that line and that stem because it doesn't like it. But it's frustrating. There, okay, so I finally drew my eighth note the right way. It's frustrating because you could reasonably expect that any musician would look at my chicken scratch handwriting and be able to read that. It's, It was obviously a one beam there. So you can see I finally got my three notes in, and then my B and G sharp. All right. Uh, did that work? It didn't work. It did something weird. So I think this is where I did the thing where I put the notes in by themselves. No accidentals. No, no, I did foolishly add the accidental. Did it work? Oh, I tried, a, I tried a different beam direction. Yeah, and so that worked. Yay, okay. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't like the way the Omnibook beams its notes. So it, it, it's very particular about the way you beam. See, and then I, I drew the letter S there, and that worked. All right, next measure. Oh, my God, this is a disaster. I've got two eighth notes, and then 16th note triplets, followed by five eighth notes after that beamed in a certain way and okay and what did I do here I think yes I foolishly just tried to enter everything as written and you can see when I'm done I I think it looks pretty good check it out right 16th note triplets they're beamed okay look at that it looks good 
Now watch what happens when I'm done. Staff pad doesn't like it. Yeah, there I am foolishly adding the accidentals in. It doesn't work. I'm going to speed this up. So you can see now the variety of approaches I took. I got rid of those notes. Uh, okay, my first two notes worked. Yay. Now I'm going to try to attempt these 16th note triplets. I mean, look at that. That that looks like regular notes. We're going at four speed now, by the way. I can't I don't normally write this quickly. Okay, finally it got it got the next beat. Right, so now I'm doing this thing where I only do a few notes at a time and I stretch the measure out. And it got, okay, it got four notes, but no, they weren't the right notes. And I, oh, I'm so dumb. I still hadn't learned my lesson with the accidentals, but I went for it anyway. Oh my god, now here's the battle with a half note rest. You know, I don't, how do you draw a half note rest? That looks like a half note rest to me. We're still going at four times speed, by the way. So, we're, uh, yeah, I... <laughs> I don't know. So I thought, half note rest, draw the letter H. You know, half note, maybe it recognizes the letter H. No, lowercase. Whoa, I got a quarter note rest out of that. So I found I could get a quarter note rest pretty consistently by drawing the letter H. And I thought I could get a consistent eighth rest by drawing the number seven. It didn't always work. All right, fine, that measure. Finally, we got it. And mind you, we're going four times as fast right now. Uh, no, no, don't try that. What? I forgot. Anytime you beam three things in a row, it's going to assume that those are triplets. So don't beam things three things in a row because it doesn't like that. Oh, <laughs> shoot. That's as far as I got. I got to line five. I got four measures done in about 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Conclusion, like I said before, it, it was a pretty frustrating experience. Uh, mind you, I've only used this program for 90 minutes and I've read no tutorials. I didn't read any instructions or, you know, read the help. Okay, I'm lying. I, I did. I actually, you know, watched the introduction tutorial about how to open it up and create a new document or whatever. But as far as like how to draw notes or any of that stuff, I figured, you know, I was a music major in college. I know how to draw eighth notes and stuff. So I just jumped in and went for it. And you can see the results. They're pretty terrible. In about 10 minutes and 14 seconds, I got, I think, four measures done. Um, yeah. So now let's check out how I did in Finale. Okay, so here we are in Finale. I'm going to start at the same place. Line four of confirmation in the Omnibook. <clears throat> in Finale, I like to put in all the rhythms first. So you can see I'm not doing any pitches yet. All I'm doing is entering the rhythms. So it's all on whatever note pops up, okay? I learned this trick from a trombone player friend of mine, Jeannie, <clears throat> and it's I find it to be very quick. Even though I've sped this video up double speed, um, I'm going in and only putting the rhythmic values. So if you look at line number four, there's six eighth notes in a row followed by a quarter rest, and that's what I've done inside Finale. The next measure is an eighth rest followed by five eighth notes and a quarter note. So as I oh I made a mistake there. So as I'm entering these notes, I uh, I don't I mean I'm sorry I don't enter any notes. I just do the rhythmic values, and it's slamming. It's uh, way faster inside Finale. So disclaimer I've I've been using Finale for a long time. Uh, I don't even know how long. Honestly I can't remember when I started using it. I think it was like around '97. Oh my God. Something like that. I've been using Finale a long time, and I hate it. It frustrates the heck out of me. Every time I use it, I have to Google something, and I can't remember how to do something in it. But I can enter notes very quickly inside Finale, and it just it mops the floor with Staff Pad right now because you know it's not doing any recognition. It's just rhythmic values. Let me speed up this next part. So now we're going 4x four times as fast. I've entered in all the rhythmic values for the chart and I go back with the repitch tool and I enter the notes on the MIDI keyboard one at a time and I'm a horrible piano player but if I go slow I can enter these notes in one at a time. You see what's happening every time I press a note it assigns it to that rhythm so I'm not playing in real time I'm just playing confirmation in slow motion on the piano and it reads it down. And I finished the rest of the tune in finale. I, don't, I forgot it took five minutes in eight seconds for me to get from line number four to the end of the tune. And that's not particularly fast. I mean, that's just whatever, five minutes and eight seconds. 
So yeah, Finale just mopped the floor with Staff Pad right now because I'm way more experienced. Uh, so, you know, Staff Pad is, I, I'm not sure it's worth the price. It's a pretty expensive program and it doesn't seem like it's quote unquote ready for prime time. But the promise of being able to carry around a music editor that recognizes your handwriting on your iPad is awesome. So, I, I mean, do I recommend it? I mean, I kind of do if, if you're going to be writing simple charts that don't use a lot of accident accidentals and um, you're not going to stray off into too many weird keys. It seems like, I, I don't know who would be doing like full score or orchestral arrangements using this app. I don't think it's possible right now. It just it it just sucks. It's slow and the handwriting recognition is not intuitive at all. Now I'm going to be really embarrassed cuz now I'm going to go look at some tutorials and if there's like a really easy way to enter notes in this thing, I'll I'll try to figure out how to do that, but um just, you know, if you're trying to write like regular music the way you would just write a piece of paper, grab some staff paper and try to copy a piece of music by hand. This this app is not going to do it. It's going to piss you off. It's very frustrating. But I'll I'll look into this and if there is a way to like, you know, maybe you have to draw your quarter notes a certain way or it wants you to enter your accidentals a certain way, I'll try to figure that out and do a follow-up review. But right now I would say it sucks and it's very limited, but I wouldn't say it's totally useless because like man, you know, I teach I, I teach third grade recorder, and if you're gonna bust out hot cross buns on this thing, you know, in the key of G with no sharps or flats or no accidentals, uh, I did that earlier today. When, that was like one of the first things I did, and it worked quite well. It, uh, you know, it was it was medium good, um, uh, but I think they're developing this app a lot. I think it's gonna get a lot better. I I see there's like a way to enter chords that looks really cool, and I think there's a lot of potential here, but. Uh, I think you're paying a lot of money for what may be not a full-fledged program yet. I think it's, there's a lot of potential. It's going to get a lot better. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, you know. oh, if you're going to be doing some hardcore copy work, this is, this app is not for you, man. It's You're not going to write a big band chart on this thing. But if you're going to be doing some easy third-grade music for recorder, this might fit the bill. And, you know, you can be at the park writing music on your iPad. It's... Of course, you could be at the park on your MacBook Pro or your laptop writing music, too. So, yeah. I don't know.